want you to keep burping. Okay. I can I don't want you to turn it off and okay. then burp. Okay, yeah. I mean I can't there's no I mean I guess I could hit there's like a mute button I could hit and no, then no, burp, no. but it's not No, we're not gonna do that. It'll be way easier to edit out <laughs> the burping after later. I don't want you to. That's what I'm saying. I mean, I know. I'll give you like a. You can have your own private mix of that. Oh, good. But for you, my own. Yeah, but not one we would put out for to the my people. Ears. Yeah, something. Night. You could, yeah, because you like to listen to stuff to fall asleep to. I do. So I could actually just I probably do. cut it out so it's just burps. Yeah, you can listen. You listen to music. I can't listen to music. I immediately fall asleep. But though it's like how. The music is so jarring to my system. Sometimes if when the song changes or something like that, it will it will wake me up. But like the most jarring thing for me about listening to music while I'm trying to sleep is that I, I'm a side sleeper and headphones are hard to wear. Me too. Uh, when you're when you're sleeping, so and I, I don't like in ear headphones, but we got those. I got those. Uh, where are they, the AirPods? The AirPods. I can't. With the AirPods, I can't. I mean, I know I'll lose them. They'll squish in my ear. Like, even when you're laying on your side, can't you feel them? Yeah, totally. I mean, they're they're earbuds. They You feel them all the time. I feel like a few months ago, no, a few years ago, mm -hmm. they were going to have those headphones where they're flat yeah and you can just lay on them well they make pillow speakers that you put under your pillow that sounds that's probably that sounds like radiation well i, I mean everything's radiation <laughs> like it's going into your brain everything's going into your brain yeah but that's like well whatever think the places you put your phone when you go jogging. oh i i try to tell you every day but i forget to take your phone out of your pocket mm -hmm. like don't have it on you all the time but then I, I, you know, then I go out and I have it right. You, know, you put in my bra. Yeah, I was it. gonna say you like strap it between your shoulder blades or something, right? Uh, that's the one bra I have. It goes in the back. It's that stupid Lululemon crap bra where yeah. you like. It's like there's a little pocket. You thousand dollars, so it comes with a, a bonus pocket. It's such a waste. I'll tell you. Just get some duct tape. Just tape that on there. I'm gonna do that. Yeah. Next time it's with my Target bra. Yeah. See, that's. Way safer, way saner. But yeah, I don't know. Listening to music when I sleep, uh, all it does, it distracts me. You know, like it keeps me from thinking about like all the shit I need to do the next day or all the dumb shit that happened in the day that just happened. And it's like just enough to kind of make me forget about all that shit and fall asleep. See, so. I have to listen to someone talking, mm -hmm. some kind of a guided meditation or some kind of hypnotherapy stuff where... As I'm, I'm about to fall asleep, and I'm like, "Good, got it." Then I take it out of my ears. Yeah, I can't, I can't fall asleep with things in my ears. Well, it's, I, I mean, the problem with like it, it's, it's like a, a suspended sentence because I put it in, fall asleep, and then eventually roll over in some way that like I, the earbud hits my ear. Like I wake up and go like, "Oh shit!" Or, or you know, some music is playing. Or what the fuck is going? On? And then I have to take them out, put them away, and then try to fall That's back the, asleep. Yeah, I would which, never be able to do that. I haven't had any trouble with it yet, but I definitely don't do it every this night. This is so... I feel like this is boring. Yeah. For boring people. People are like, what the hell is this crap? Well, I don't know. It's like what... People talk all the time. You know? It's, this is the title of my book. People, people talk People all talk all the time. <laughs> A novella. You remember the... Like the book, What Do People Do All Day? I ask myself that all the time. Yeah. What do people do all day? Anyway. When you're like out and about. Yeah. You see people and just like think about like, well, what is their daily? What, what is it? What is their struggle? What is, I mean. Tell you, me you're at everything. But yeah. it would make you feel better, wouldn't it? I just assume that everyone else is having at least a, as, as fucked up a time as I am, if not more so. Right. You have to think that way. Yeah. Because otherwise you'll just dwell on the negative. You, yeah. It's, yeah. It just kind of is what it is. You're like, I'm not alone. Yeah. We're all in this together. We are all in all the... Oh, my God. <laughs> we are all in this together. <laughs> That's tr so true. It's kind of in the vein of what we want to talk about today. Yeah. So how did you... What? How did you yoga? Let's talk about how it. How did I yoga? How did you yoga? What What Bruh. made you decide that Bruh. you were like... I've been yoga-ing. Um, it sounds so douchey. Back I mean, yeah. <laughs> yeah, well, it's turned into this thing, right? It's like this huge business. It's a business. It's, it's a it's a business of people on Instagram. It's a people. It's like it's like physical. Monster. It's like physical training type people selling videos of them doing yoga. Probably um, right. I don't know. There is that. Um, 
I just figure all the people that are just like, give me a thousand dollars and I'll do a Google Hangout with you for 20 minutes and tell you not to eat fucking pizza all the time. There are shit. those people. And, you know, I I think that it's, it's lost. I, I, some people have lost their way in the vein of like, oh, I'm going to buy into this trendy thing, yoga, and I'm going to do this yeah. when they don't really sort of, they, they, they don't start out. So... I just started going to, uh, actually, I started with DVDs. Mm-hmm. Um, Billy Blanks. Billy Blanks Yoga. <laughs> Ty Boga. Feel the burn. Ty Boga. Ty Boga. Oh, my God. Don't tell anyone. All right. All right. That's we're going to cut that out. That's, this is where the money's made. Um, I started doing a DVD of Vinyasa Yoga mm-hmm. back in 2000. I'm going to give away my age, but like 2004, Okay, I think. Wait, you were alive in 2004? I was. Okay. All right. I was very young. Okay. Very, very young. <laughs> like elementary school <laughs> elementary yoga. Elementary school. Yeah. <laughs> um, I'm going to jail. And, you know, yoga was always this thing that even back in 2004, 2003, um, it, to me, it was always skinny people who were like super in shape like bending super crazy Mm -hmm. and you know standing on their heads and wearing little sports bras and i was like yo that's like so intimidating well yeah i mean yoga experts that are just showing you check me out i know all this shit already yeah watch me balance on one toe one toe at my butt and the other toe in the air you know whatever um i know that's your favorite Pose. Yeah, that's that's pretty much but, that's the only one I can do. Um, so I started, and it was extremely challenging for me at first. But you know, like I just sort of did it more and more, and I thought this is so amazing because when I started, I goddamn near like had a heart attack. Like I mean, I couldn't bend that way, and it was frustrating. Mm-hmm. And I could see how other people would get frustrated and not want to follow through and well, keep I think doing. like the I think the thing from the outside looking in at yoga the thing I look at and see is like okay yeah it's like people bending around and then they're just like ah the spirit energy the vibes man the vibes but that's the so, thing but like I look at it and go like why why would anyone do this like I I don't need to bend like that like I don't need the fucking vibes like the thing is is you do feel the benefits you do feel the vibe after a while um, you know, because for somebody who can't touch their toes mm-hmm. in a month, what if they could touch their toes, put their hands on the ground, you know, put their forehead to their knees? That's a huge, not only does it make you feel like, wow, I've like, I I can do this now. Yeah. But it's really beneficial for your body, your circulatory system, okay. your joints, the synovial fluid in your joints, which is everything. I don't that's... even know what that is. Is that, is that the synovial fluid? Is that what, like, when you crack your knuckles, it gets in the middle and makes your hands weaker? I mean, I didn't go to medical school for that long. Okay. But I do know that once your joints are lubricated, you know, you're, you do feel better. Mm-hmm. And I was telling you lately that your skin looked better just from drinking more water. Well, drinking more water is not yoga. No, but it's the same idea, right? You're getting everything kind of... You're getting the circulatory... I'm getting system. lubricated. You're getting lubricated. Lubrication is key. All right. I, so, yeah. And also, that's why it's important when you're doing yoga to warm up, right? Because you're getting everything warm. That's why they have mm-hmm. hot yoga, because it's it's really beneficial when you're warm. Yeah, but like to, to back up, like you're talking about like, oh, it, it's like, isn't it... You couldn't touch your toes, and then you could touch your toes. Isn't that great? And my answer is like... I. No, no like why well we've actually like so what like okay great i can touch my toes what what does that, that do for me if that doesn't mean anything to you yeah then what should mean something to you is that you still have taken that time out of your day and done something maybe you didn't run 10 miles or i can you tell know. you with some certainty i did not <laughs> run 10 miles <laughs> like maybe you didn't do something like that but you're getting more supple you're taking time for yourself. You're breathing more, which I'm not doing. God, podcasting. Jeez. No, yeah. When, when you have to. It's the right balance of, the, of then and then like not breathing directly into the microphone so it doesn't just go. 
<laughs> and then you start sounding like Garrison Keillor, you know, like you just got that. <laughs> that old man brawl. He did the vinyasa yoga in front of me. Anyways, so yeah. I started out doing that and it was challenging, but I got to a point where I was like, okay, now I can go out in public. Like, public yoga. Like a, a studio. Yeah, that's where it gets hot, right? Because like you can't necessarily, I mean, I guess you could turn up the heat in your apartment or house or whatever. Some studios but... I've been to have been way too cold for me. Yeah. The, and I, is, so what is the benefit? So people talk about hot yoga. The temperature. I, there's bumper stickers for some place around here that just says yoga hell. And it just yes. seems like the dumbest shit. I'm but not going to talk about that studio. Yeah. But, but what is. <laughs> but... The temperature when I was training back in 2008 to to teach mm -hmm. um the temperature they had the room at was always 72 degrees at least the instructor would get really mad if it was lower mm -hmm. than that because your joints do need to be warm you do need to be warm i think that makes sense that the room well, is like 60 65 68 oh that's degrees. nice and cool i'm gonna like i'm gonna be in my shorts take off you're my socks and relax you're gonna hurt I'm yourself i'm gonna do a lot of typing that's a good typing temperature. 65 degrees, 66, 67, don't somewhere around there. you get cold? There. I get cold. No, I, that's, that's, I run very hot, so I, I don't... That's right. You do run hot. Yeah. Like, I'm always kind of... I am hot yoga. My insides are ready. I'm, I'm the one-man vinyasa. The studio Everyone calls I, me that. The studio that I love. Mm -hmm. 90 degrees. What the... F I don't want to be in a fucking... I don't want to be 90 degrees anywhere. It's, you I don't know, want to be in a room that's 90 degrees. You walk in and you're like, this is a little hot, isn't it? But over time, you're like, ah, yes. This is what you need this to do the thing. Need. Yes, exactly. And... Okay. Yeah. Does that mean you don't really have to warm up very much because the room is already warm? Like, if you just kind of stood there, would you be like, all right, let's yoga? We still warm up. Yeah. Still got to warm up. Especially, like, if you were going to start... Uh, go into downward dog right away, your hamstrings would probably not appreciate that. Okay. Because it's like that's intense the stretching. The hamstrings are... The hamstrings are the back, back of, of the, your thigh. Back of the upper leg. Yeah, back oh, of your okay. thigh. I would say from the inner knee area mm -hmm. to like the bottom of the butt cheek. Okay. All right. Now I'm burping. Yeah, I'm going to leave all that in. <laughs> Please do. Yeah. should have done it louder. But, um, yeah, 90 degrees, and we warm up first. Vinyasa is something that's always been something that I love. Because and what I, is that? Vinyasa is... That, is, uh, is that the hot stuff? Or? No. Hot yoga. Usually, like, so if you're going to do something like Bikram, and people have all different kinds of variations on different yoga now. You have you have Payo, which sort of... That's like Pilates. That's Pilates and yoga at the same time. You have Bikram. That's and where they heat up the room to like 115 or something like that. that. What the fuck? I, what is wrong with people? Bikram is not my jam, but a lot of people love it. For what? What is it, is it like because they're going on a fucking vision quest? Is it just like, let's hit, hang out in the sweat lodge and bend? A lot of people love it. Do they take it. a lot of peyote? I found uh, actually a lot of people who are in the wellness community do take a lot of... Well, I don't, I, I don't want to generalize, but there are people yeah, who yeah. do plants. Mm -hmm. Call Plant. it plants. Oh, okay. Plant ceremony. Okay. Ayahuasca. Oh, oh, oh. That stuff. Okay, that I, stuff. You will not catch me in the desert doing ayahuasca. I, I can't take an Advil. Yeah. No, you you would rather have a headache. It's, it's, I'd rather have a headache. Yes. Yeah, it's, it's well documented in this household. <laughs> because Motrin... Okay, whatever. We won't get into yeah. that. But so vinyasa is like a flow kind of yoga. You flow from one position to the next. kind of like a dance almost. Mm-hmm. Um, like you'll flow from a downward dog and you'll lift your leg and then you'll go into warrior one, warrior two. And it's all a really beautiful, almost like a choreography. And then, so is the teacher kind of calling it? Yes. As you go from, yes. from one thing to the She's next? She's saying like, now we'll go up into downward dog. Now we'll go to chaturanga. And now we'll come up into up dog. And now we'll go back into downward dog. And now we'll jump forward. And then you do like a sun salutation. But... Hatha yoga is probably where what's I was... Up, what's up, dog? Up, dog. <laughs> what up, dog? <laughs> it's like you... Uh, that's the one you hate because you hate standing on your hands. It's the one I'm not where a handstand kind of guy. Yeah. You hate being on your hands. It's like you're, 
your back legs are supporting you, but you're like on your stomach and you reach up with your chest. Okay, yeah. And you All right. you lift up and you kind of hold yourself up with your hands. There's a hot dog place called What's Up Dog near the office uh, that has a How lot many of times have you been there this week? Zero. Okay. This year, zero. <laughs> Last year, zero. Um, if they're going to go out of business, I have to help them. They're not going to go out of business. They're, they've got a They great... had two locations and now they only have one. But they have so... that name. That name is good. All right. Anyway, Hatha Yoga is probably for people who want something a little more gentle. Hatha? Hatha. Hatha Yoga. Like like the Star Wars Ice Planet. As Hoth. Oh, okay. There's no uh. Okay. That's, it's Hoth. And also Hatha. it's H O T H. That is. Not H A T H A. Oh. That's how got you spell it. Hatha. Okay. And that's like regular temperature yoga? It's regular temperature, um, usually. Mm -hmm. And they don't flow from position to position so fast. Also with Iyengar. Iyengar. Now you're just making shit up. I always say it wrong. But Iyengar is, uh, I feel like that one is where you hold the poses for longer. Hatha, you move a little bit faster, but it's not as fast. So it's less about... as vinyasa. Why do these things even have different names if the difference because is just like it's, it, it's ancient, flow it's and an not ancient flow? It's an ancient practice, right? And there are different teachers. Like BKS Iyengar is a teacher. Okay. So that's his style of teaching. So they're almost Bikram. like variations of martial arts. Like, you know, you got Bruce Lee, the right. father of Jeet Kune Do. Yes. And then. Yes. Okay. God, now I know why you're so hot all the time. It's because you're podcasting. I have to take this off. I'm about to get... Yeah, go ahead. Take it off. I'm about to get Big yeah. Rim in here. Go ahead. Take it stop off. Stop it. What? Take it off. I'm so, stop it. What? So, yes. So, anyway. So, I started with Vinyasa, and that's kind of what I've always stuck with. I do take Hatha classes, too, when I, like, have one a slow day. Mm-hmm. Um, and Yin Yoga. That's another thing. Yin Yoga. It's not that similar to Iyeng- Iyengar, but... Uh, yin yoga is like a very a slower paced in the vein of vinyasa, I want to say, but mm-hmm. they do hold the poses longer. A lot of hip openers. Oh, yeah. That's the one where, you know, a hip opener is like, um, oh, gosh, pigeon or supta baddha konasana where you're laying down uh-huh. and you have yeah. your feet. Yeah, supta baddha konasana. Yeah, no, definitely. <laughs> uh, that's the one. It's when you're a kid in PE, they call it butterfly. Where you put your world... For me, that's... I don't know what PE... We did burpees and then super burpees. And then when, like, people would talk in class, they would make us do more burpees. What are super burpees? uh, It was like you would do a push-up in the middle of it. Or or you'd uh, kick your legs out. Because, like, what is it? A burpee is like... I thought that was burpee. No, okay. So, burpee is like you go down, kick your leg out, kick your leg back in, and then stand up and clap. I thought you'd jump at the end. Uh, You kind of jump up to standing and clap and then do it again. So it's like a one, two, three, clap. One, two, three, clap. Uh, But then sometimes they would be like, okay, after you kick your legs out, now kick your legs apart and then back. So like a bop, bop. Oh, oh, I hate, oh. And then sometimes they would be like, okay, then then do a kick your leg out, back, push They made you do that in PE? Yeah, fucking yes. That's why I went and fucking got a doctor's note, and they said, oh, you got asthma, you don't got to do PE. And uh, ever since, yeah, it's that worked. has been getting you out of anything that I want. It's, it's been a great career builder. Uh, <laughs> I wrote a book report on volleyball and got a B in PE. Instead of the incompletes I was getting before. That's uh, so hard to do. Yeah, no shit. It fucking sucked. I can barely do that now. They were assholes. They were fucking gym teachers. That's like what Navy SEALs do. Well, it, it fucking sucked. It, it felt like, yeah. It... When we had PE, it was called Butterfly. Put the soles of your feet together mm-hmm. and sort of um, let your knees fall to the side. That's a great. That's my favorite. And laying down. Huh. Feels so good. It's a real hip opener. It's a real hip opener. Oh yeah. You know what I when I read Holly Madison's book? Yes. About Hugh Hefner. Mm-hmm. She said that he would give her coil. He tried to give her coiludes, mm-hmm. and he called them thigh openers. That like gross. It's pretty gross. <laughs> but you know Hugh Hefner's pretty gross. Like you expect that out of Hugh Hefner because he's Hugh fucking Hefner. He was Hugh Hefner when I was. Uh, you know, a teenager, early 20s, I was like, yeah, Playboy. And now I'm kind of like, ooh. Did you ever um, 
Did you ever get like the Playboy bunny? Uh, like the, there was the thing you would put on yourself Here, when you went into the tanning booth. This is, you know, this, this is so embarrassing. I'm, you're asking me this cause you know, I, I used I, to do that. I mean, I don't know, but I know. No, I think I've told you that before. I don't remember. I used to be, I used to tan all the time in the early 2000s. Mm-hmm. That was what you did. And yeah. you would put a Playboy bunny sticker. Right. Popular place was on your hip. Of course. And then you can have the Playboy bunny. Mm-hmm. Man. Those were the days. I mean, yeah, it used to be like, was it like there was like the Playboy store on, on like the Sunset Strip or something like across from like Tower Records. There was like a, or was that like a Hustler store or Penthouse store or something? A Hustler store was in Hollywood. Yeah. Okay. Or LA. Yeah. Uh, um, and I think it's gone now. It's really I think sad. they're all gone now. I drive past a Penthouse branded strip club every day. And when it first opened, uh, I remember... Uh, my roommate at the time who, who was working at a lot of those clubs and stuff like that was just like, oh, it's it's beautiful. It's like it's, it was brand new. And they were like, oh, they, they're serving like really nice food and all this other stuff. And it was like a nice building. And I drive past every day and it looks like every other shithole on Broadway. And it just looks like this rundown. And like the Hustler Club's around the corner. It looks even skeevier. That's sad. Because for a while that was like the new thing too. It was like, oh, the Hustler Club. That's It's nice. It's upscale. It's not like... Fuck what I don't what are the other places you know it's not like it's not like Mitchell Brothers or or the Mitchell Brothers the cent- at yeah. the strip club yeah yeah that sounds like a freaking place where you get your tires rotated. the Mitchell Brothers they did that documentary like Woody Harrelson was in it or something but like it was the two brothers one of them shot the other one it's like famous San Francisco strip club oh, all this other I'll stuff I have to look that up yeah sounds right up my alley I assume it's still there that that one's not on Broadway that's in a different area but yeah like you know as a yeah as a teenager or my early twenties. That was all happening then, the Playboy thing. Right, the whole, like, Girls Next Door, like, they, they, it made Playboy mainstream again, in a way. I could go off on a whole other podcast about Girls right. Next Door. Yeah, well, that's, let's save that <laughs> part. So <laughs> When that show was really, that's when I was working at EB Games. Oh, okay. When that was super, and so I was... So did you ever play the Playboy the Mansion game? Yes. That was probably coming out around that time. Oh, yeah, yep, yeah. yep. Uh, I remember that being fucking terrible that's how yeah and i was way into leisure suit larry i was like the only male chauvinist female (laughs) game player in the early 2000s i I want to say i remember when we first met you uh i came over to your apartment and we played that leisure suit larry game for i love that game for you know i i understand like that now i'm more uh woke we all grow up (laughs) but i still love that game i mean there's nothing wrong with loving that game it's not like it's it's harmless i mean it's not harmless i mean but but in terms of just like on the scale uh of it's it's yes it's it's a lot closer to harmless than some of the other fucking bullshit that's been out there and that was that game was so controversial no it was no it was i remember kids would try to come in and get that game all oh the well time. that's i mean that yes but but the actual content of the game no but there was like and not... then people were saying like oh wow on the and then the, at the end then the girls really show their boobs which then that didn't happen so but... uh, that's the thing though leisure suit larry started in the early '80s, like the first when the first Leisure Suit Larry came came out, I should look it up. But it was like I don't know, but demographics though, yeah, it was pretty good. But like it was, it was the exact same thing where you would get a copy of that game, and you and your friend would sit down and just go like, "I hear that they f- fuck at the end of this." Oh yeah, and we need to we need to finish this game. We need oh, to yeah. see there's going to be naked girls in this, and they never were. They never were. My most fondest memory. And it barely showed anything was just like, you know, I I moved out, you know, was living on my own, not living on my own, had roommates or whatever, but yeah. we would get drunk and play Leisure Suit Larry and like maybe you'd see a, a titty. Yeah, right. It was fun. Yeah. So fun. So in those early games, they had a thing because they didn't want kids to play it. So they had a quiz at the beginning of the game. And it was like asking questions about fucking Nixon and shit. Because it was like it was like that was how they did it. It was like any adult would that's, know this, but any best. kid playing this game would be like, "What the fuck is a Nixon?" Uh, and I'm sorry, that's amazing. Yeah, yeah, I'll, I'll show it to you one of these days because it's because it's pretty, what is a Nick? Oh my god, because it's pretty weird. That's that's incredible. Yeah. They should still do that now. Be like, uh, so what happened in the Clinton scandal? And millennials would be like, oh. millennials would be like, which one? That's true. Yeah. That's true. Actually, 
millennials. What's the newer generation? Ex- Z. N- uh, n- well, there was because technically I'm a because I'm a millennial, right? Technically, but yeah, or are you a, a exennial? Because there's a new micro generation that no, they've identified that between too. Generation X. No, I miss that I think too. I might technically be an exennial in some weird way. Like mm. I, I need to look it up. No, but... I don't. I don't know. Well, because I because I'm not. I don't know. Originally, when I so when it was happening in the '90s. Uh, when everything was happening in the 90s. Everything was happening in the 90s. Um, Not really. I was too young for what they called Generation X. I was, like, slightly younger than the slackers and stuff. Because I was, like, still in high school. I was, like, still, like, 15, 16 when that right. stuff was happening. So so I was a little too young for that stuff by, like, five or even ten. By, by like, t- three or four years, probably. Um now, years later, I feel way more attachment to that stuff than the generation of stuff that came afterwards. Right. Um, but I'd never really fit cleanly into any of those. But I don't think anyone does. I think that the actual fucking secret is that no one actually fully identifies with a generation because the whole thing is just like a meaningless, meaningless label. Uh, yeah. And there's no real difference. Also, nowadays, you can pick and choose what what generation you identify with. Well, most. yeah, I mean, it's like music, you know, mu- movies and stuff. Like, all that is... stuff is available everywhere, yeah, so it's not exactly. like people are only listening to new music. Yeah, and it's 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 a great thing because, well, whatever. I mean, I had access to everything too. I feel like, but yeah. Um, well, you're a millennial, so you know you you don't know what a compact disc is. Oh, I know what a compact. <laughs> I was using that because my mother never. We didn't even get our first PC until I was like damn near fifteen. Mm-hmm. So I didn't know any of that stuff. We had a freaking word processor. So we talk that's about that's all you need. You just type up your papers. You want to talk and... about freaking difficult? And it was like a wannabe computer, right? Yeah. Word processor, so break all the time. Mm. It was a nightmare. But anyway, so yoga, yoga. So you, there's all these different types of yoga. It sounds super intimidating. And then there's this. What is it? Um, Kundalini. Kundalini is not... Is that like on the same level as the vinyasas and the hathas and the pinos? So, and... Kundalini is a whole other thing, and we could talk about Kundalini for hours, and I've only been really doing Kundalini for months, so... All right. Well, maybe we should... But... Okay, all right. It's give not... Me, give me the quick yes. top level. Gosh, I can't. I need Guru Jagat. And the... Oh, she breathed... In her podcast, mm-hmm. I love her, and remember I told you she always does this... It's really great for the microphone. <laughs> it sounds a little strange, but someone should she should have an engineer gate all I that shit I know out. why she does that. Well, Kundalini is a lot about breath. Mm-hmm. It's a lot about meditation, and you do do certain positions that are yoga positions. Like you can do like down you you do you do downward dog, um, certain seated positions, but it's very much um, spiritual. Mm. I would say. And it's more about channeling energy through your breath and a lot of different breath exercises, breath of fire, um, which is the one you hate. It's just, yeah, I don't know. It was good on the Super Nintendo, but when they put it out on the plate, like Breath of Fire 3, I thought was really (laughs) shitty, but even though a lot of people liked it, but it just wasn't, it wasn't for me. Just so you guys know, is where you breathe in and out through your nose very fast like this. And you said that you almost passed out. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I sat down with you and tried that once and then just got dizzy. It was like I was breathing into a paper bag. Yeah. It was like I was just hyperventilating over there. Um, so, yeah, it's a lot. And also, uh, I don't know if you want to get into this either, but don't do that on your period, listeners. <laughs> I will not. Uh, I will. Try. I mean, I'll try not to. No guarantees. But, but anyway, so Kundalini is the basic principle of that at the base of your spine, your uh, sacral chakra, is it not sacral, your root chakra, there, because there's different chakras, right? Right, of course. Right. Yeah, this Am is I all right? real. Yeah. Um, there's eight, uh, and I won't get into that now, but there's a coil at the base of your spine of energy, and the kundalini yoga is awakening that energy. Okay, so if I fully awaken this energy, what do I get? Can I fucking shoot fireballs or? Yes. Okay. Mentally. What? So no. the coil will unravel, and they say that once you start, you can't go back again if it's awakened. It's once once People the coil are gonna gets... think I'm insane. Um, it just like 
And it's true, though, once you're down the road of, like, you're meditating, you're chanting, um, yeah. you do feel different. I mean, plenty of people meditate uh, and, and just like that. I think there's something to that yes. concept of mindfulness mm-hmm. as just a way to kind of center your day. I mean, it's not too far off from what we were talking about, which is, like, literally just trying to get to sleep, uh, of, of trying to quiet your your head what uh, I love, because like think about it like every we are surrounded by information non-fucking stop it is so draining i bought this watch now it comes to me i don't oh. even need to take a phone out of my yeah. pocket to look at this stuff you full-on we'll be just having a discussion in the bedroom and you'll be like look at your watch and it's I'm like it's like awesome because like, it's like, like super he... fucking rude right because it's just like what time is it oh oh, oh it's a text oh. message and you'll be looking and i'm like what are you what time and you're like oh i got a text message it's like what yeah Oh, you love all that stuff. It's, I mean, it, it it sucks socially. The the concept of right. like the smartwatch, I think, is because if you think about it, there's been hundreds of years, probably. Well, maybe not hundreds, but years and years, generations of social cues of people looking at their wrist when they <laughs> to want to of, leave. Yes, exactly. And now to have that like vibrate in a way that says like, hey, you got a meeting in five minutes. Oh, people or, will full on look at their phone. Or right? hey, uh, you know. Dave Lang is live on Twitch. Uh, you always got to get out. This is not. That's that. probably that's not something. Important. That's probably not something I need to be getting on my wrist. That's what I everyone need to. needs. Though <laughs> TBH. All right, Lang streaming. Got to. Okay, better wrap this up. But like, people will full on look at their phones, and I, I know, like they have that one picture circulating where it was like people would always look at their newspapers before phones and look at all these people looking at newspapers. Oh, well, yeah, but then they would have to put them down because then they would be finished with the story. Now there's billions of stories ongoing and never ending. Right. So in, in your eyeballs, Mm -hmm. in your butthole, everything. No, I get the best news in my butthole. Um, Uh, but what I love about Kundalini is that it's, relatively simple because you're not you don't have to go into a headstand to feel the benefits you could just breathe you can if you close one nostril if you close your right nostril and you breathe through your left nostril and you like extend the out out breath a little bit longer and you do that for like a few minutes Mm -hmm. you're gonna be more relaxed so that is actually something else the watch does (laughs) <laughs> uh, is it will pop up and I know it, you yeah. told me that it does tell you to breathe I do like that about it pops it. up and says like hey you should breathe for a minute and and so it'll vibrate in time to, it'll it'll kind of dictate when you should be breathing in and out by vibrations on your wrist I do like that and I actually it's been nice yeah uh, I have not done it like it pops up and says it and I just yeah, look at it and go it? Uh, not lately yeah. for, when I first got it I was doing all of it I was like oh yeah I gotta exercise rings and blah 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 uh, and oh we better stop and breathe um, but I'm going to say since the start of this year, I don't think I've, I think I've stopped to breathe like once. Cause I just look at it and go like, I'm in the middle of something. Yeah. Watch, leave me the fuck alone. Yeah. That's the thing. That's why it's important to sort of dedicate. And when you said like, what's the benefit of, I don't care if I can put, touch my toes. Well, the, the thing is, is I've never been able to touch my toes. I'm not convinced it's possible. you might be poss- able to one day. Okay. And even if you it's not been care. something I've been striving right, for, but even it's if like, you, right, what but is, if, if I touch them and I, I mean, I get to go, oh, is it going to be like some orgasmic about, awakening? Remember all back to all the stuff that we've done physically that you were like, oh, I ate it. Rah, rah, rah. You still felt really good afterwards and you admitted it. Yeah, no, I did. Yeah, we, we've, we haven't done much lately, but like, yeah, there were a handful of times mm-hmm. where I tried to do some yoga. Since you trained to be a teacher, you were able to kind of walk me through it and make sure I wasn't breaking myself too much. Not too much. I mean, I'm not like. Yeah, no, know. I was definitely um, fucking myself up but a But that's bit. why it's important to have, I think, any kind of practice where you're taking time out from the information in your eyeballs and your butthole and mm. all this stuff. And you're like breathing. You're like, how do I feel like internally? What can I do? And I think that that's, what's great about this day and age is that that message is sort of getting out there. I know that self care, that stuff is out yeah, there. Yeah. And a lot of people are like, ugh, no self care. And I was well, it's at like first a lot too. of people are like, you know, a lot of people turned it into a into very good business for them. So, oh, you know, sure. and, and so you look for at sure. like wellness and self care and all that industry, stuff. Like it's a lot of people trying to sell you fucking bullshit. Yeah. The wellness industry is really a double edged sword, in my opinion. I love it. I think it's great. 
Uh, it opens up people of every age to taking better care of themselves and bettering themselves mentally, which is so important now, Mm -hmm. which really is what yoga is all about. I think now, you know, sure. Uh, and what it might have always been, I mean, it's this ancient practice thousands of years old. Right. Um, and you look at all the gurus of old and you look at all the yoga teachers from way back when. Mm -hmm. And, um, I think that's the message they're all trying to send is to just feel more enlightened because we're not, or even just like, I like enlightenment, whatever I, I, I look at it more as like, fuck, stop for a sec stop right just like hang out for a minute and everything goes so fast yeah do you want to be plugged in for all of it you know i don't know it's that's the i want you to try some of the vr fitness stuff uh vr makes me so nauseous i know but this stuff you know it's not like driving so it's not like the whole world is moving it's like right. you're kind of standing in a static area which it'll still you know you you get nauseous the game that i saw you playing place. really reminded me of the wii u yeah well, <laughs> well i mean if you remember what was the game and also what was the game that they launched for the one where it was like there was sparkles and you grab that and pull that down was it like a disney game or something fantasia yes yeah that is what it kind of reminded me of, which yeah. I could not stand. Fantasia was a good idea with some problems. Oh, it was... It was, a, it was a great idea when I heard about it. <laughs> it was a less good idea when it became a game. I, won't, I don't want to rant yeah, on no, Fantasia. We can, can, someday we'll have hour-long discussions about Yeah, no, but... but behind based- the scenes of Fantasia. Um so, but like, yeah, it, it's it is it is like the Wii if the TV was strapped to your face and all around you. you know, Why because, would you want that? Because the the controllers track a lot better, and so wh- why I, I want that? You. Why I want that is because I can't exercise. I don't know. Th- this is the best I've been about exercising in a very long time. Right. Because the nature of it is compelling, and the nature of it makes you forget uh, how much time has passed. Mm. Um, because it's it's like you're working out in casino world. There's no clock. God, there's I wish no you could go to casino world. There's right no now. you know you're just you're in it. You have no idea what time of day it is. Anything like that. It all just kind of goes away, and so it kind of induces a flow state to a certain extent mm-hmm. where you are just focused on the task at hand and the concept of just like how tired you are or it's whatever like a starts meditation. to yeah. It starts. You could to, do that with anything. You do that with knitting. You do that with sure right yeah. yeah. But in this case, you know, it's like, it, it you know, it, it's the one I've been doing sound boxing is, um, you know, you are finding YouTube videos of songs and people will kind of craft. It's like a rhythm game like Fantasia or like Rock Band or any of this other stuff. So like balls will come at your face. There goes your social life. Well, hey, <laughs> uh, uh, yellow ones and red ones. And, and you have a yellow glove and a red glove on your hands and you have to punch them with the right glove and they come at you kind of different heights. And so... What I saw was, because uh, I have very bad vision, mm-hmm. and I feel like they were coming so fast that I would mess it up so bad. I would get frustrated. Yeah, there's definitely, well, I mean, you want to start with an easy one. You know, that, right. it's just like anything, you, you kind of want to start with one, an easy one just to get your, your legs under you a little bit for what it is. But right. but once I get going with it, like when the track is really well produced, like because you create your own, you can create your own tracks to the YouTube videos. Right. And so... A lot of people have done that, and you can pull theirs and, and play them, and some are better than others in terms of just, like, being on rhythm. So, like, at times it feels like it's dancing. At times it feels like you're conducting the song or, like, playing the drums with the way you're kind of punching, uh, depending on the song and depending on how they've built it. And when they're done really well, you feel like you're part of this larger experience. You 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 feel like – and that's when everything else goes away, and that's what makes it – Something that you can do for an hour straight, even though it is like, I mean, for me, it's intense as fuck. But, you know, for you, probably whatever. Uh, I know, but an hour, it just seems like so long. But, of course, an hour-long yoga class for you would probably be yeah. so long. And, to me and it goes boring by. as shit, you know? Because it's just like, all right, let's lay here. Well, that's and they're like, lay I, here and think. And well, I'm like, no, because love... the last thing I want to do is think. Why not? I think. I have plenty of time to think. But, I have too much time to think. But the whole thing is lay there and let your thoughts 
go, like, you know, just go, but observe that. Don't, uh, you know, don't stay in them, you know, because you're not your thoughts. They just come and go. Yeah, but there are so many of them. And and some of them become actionable or, or things I'm worried about or the things it's just like, cause it's just like things come through and I'm just like, Oh man, I gotta, I gotta do that. Well, someone like you would, I gotta really... write this check. I gotta pay this bill. I gotta do this. Yeah, Someone like you would really benefit though, because you have so much going on in your head. But the, that's what I'm saying is like this VR stuff actually kind of gets me there. Well, that's good. Uh, in a way Maybe that like it. the stuff we've done with yoga, like it, it's nice but it doesn't quiet anything because I, cause I'm not sure of myself. I mean, half the time I'm, I'm sitting there with like a quivering arm oh, on I the know, mat I know. And, and wondering like, am I doing this wrong? I probably shouldn't hurt like this. Is this how I'm supposed to hurt? Is it like, I'm questioning every single facet of it mm -hmm. as to whether I'm doing it right or wrong. Like I'm in my own head that entire time. You're too worried self about the, the nature of the pose or am I, you know, like all that stuff on top of whatever else is going on. So right. it, it's like, right. it's not, right. it's not relax. It's not mentally relaxing for You're me. You're too self-aware. Yeah. Um, I see that. I can see that. Yeah. And maybe one day we'll get there. Maybe one day I'll get you to meditate and you will actually enjoy it. But, um, it's good. I mean, I just see you, you come in with your, with the little mark from the mask, mm -hmm. like all over your forehead and right, your yeah. hair sticking up all crazy uh -huh. and you're like sweaty and you are really happy after it. So, yeah, you know, I mean, everybody has their thing, right? Yeah. But the thing about yoga is that it's very accessible. Mm -hmm. People don't realize that. Well, you don't need a lot of stuff, right? You don't need a lot of stuff. You just need a mat. And you Do need you even to... really, I mean, depending on what poses you're doing, you might not even need the mat, right? Or um, It depends on the surface you're working with. Yeah. I, I don't like doing it without a mat um, just because I get paranoid about whether or not I'm going to fall. Right. If I'm going to fall on like a hard surface. And also I just, I'm scared of what's living in our carpet. <laughs> Carpet's so gross. Anyway, <laughs> these carpets are fine. Let's I, just I, not I should, I should get vacuum, into that. I should vacuum in here, though. Let's it's just not get into that. But under this desk is just like if you like crumbled up chips. Oh God! What? But you know the thing is, is don't be intimidated. If you go on Instagram and you see some chick doing, you know, mm -hmm. standing on one finger in like a tiny, tiny little, you know, booty shorts and a sports bra. You don't have to do that. Breathe through your left nostril. I will not do that. I'm telling you, this is life changing. Before, if you can't sleep at night, mm -hmm. take your index finger and hold it over your. I'm like sounding like this now. Hey. Hello, hi. Hey, hey. Do you want to go out with me? Absolutely not. Oh God. Um. So cover your right nostril. Do you want to do it with me right now? Sure. Just for like you know a little bit. Okay. So we're gonna cover our right nostril and breathe through your left. So. Can I just tell you that this sucks? <laughs> what sucks about it? Uh, are you? Are your nostrils plugged up? So I just went to the doctor for my kind of yearly checkup. Oh, it was it go. was a new doctor, mm -hmm. and he was eyeballing me and feeling me up and doing all sorts of stuff. <laughs> and he was shining a light you around. Didn't have to get the thing you didn't want to get though. No, he, he and he also did not want to he do was it either. Too. Uh, he was like, "You're not 50, so I don't need to check your prostate." I thought it was 40. I thought it was 40 too. I'm surprised. I was going in fully expecting uh, some action, and there was I've none. Had to, I've had to handle so many stool specimens in my life. Okay, sorry, go on. Uh, well, that's just the thing. <laughs> I don't know if I'd call what the cat does a stool specimen. But, <laughs> um, and he shined a light up my nostrils and was like, hey, have you ever had a sleep study? Uh, and I was like, no. And he said, well, your, your – uh, nostrils are incredibly small like your air passageways are super small so mm. as soon as i did that like i'm breathing through my left nostril and i feel like i'm not getting enough oxygen but you know what my right one is better though okay we'll do it well it's really the left that is it's like <laughs> what <laughs> the left is more it's more cooling if you breathe through the left but that's not true you know everyone only breathes through one nostril even when they're even when you're unplugged right what you can only physically breathe through one nostril at a time. So what happens when the nostril is closed? What happens when you're sick? I mean, saying that's what I'm saying. If you close one, you breathe through the other. If you close, but if they are both, if you're not clenching your nose, doing anything like that, and you just breathe through your nose, air is only going in one nostril. 
and out one nostril as well. Put your hand. Which one is it? It's different for everyone. And it might be different from time to time based on. It feels like it's coming from both. Look at my. They're both flaring inward. Oh, your finger, your finger smells weird. What? Uh, they they flare because that's mus that's muscular because of the it, it's not the air passing through that's that's just. I feel the air coming through both of them though. No, like here, put your finger under my. I feel it coming from both. Yes, you're wrong. It's only the right one. I'll have to get back to you on that. All right. I don't know what you read. It's science. Is it? Yeah, what? it's absolute Where science. Where did you get the information from? It's the internet. I don't know. It's WebMD. Those of you at home with normal sized nostrils who maybe don't have the flu, try it. Just try it. Just breathe through one nostril. Just breathe pl- through your, plug, plug up a nostril. Close your right nostril with your index finger. I'm going to say maybe try the left, though. Just do it for like two minutes. Two or three minutes if you can't sleep. And I bet you'll be, everybody's going to be like, whatever, bitch. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, what? that shit sounds crazy. Yeah. Well, uh, you, I, I, everything I say sounds crazy to you. Yeah, pretty much. But the whole Michigas of the oh, yeah. westernized... <laughs> Of the westernized, it's a Yiddish word. It means crazy. Okay. Craziness. Um, I the, thought it was another type of yoga. Michigas is, it should Like be. the Michigas position? The Michigas like a- position is the is a chair, twisting chair pose. That's the Michigas position. All right. That hurts a lot. Oh. Um, regardless of what you find, whatever, uh, I'm here to tell you it's easy. It doesn't need to be. Yeah, I mean that that was the thing. Like, so I tried to do some like uh, we fit with the balance board for the we. I the early bar, part of that is that. it's not great, but it, it, the whole part of the early part of it is based on like balance and you doing that. Was it like when you put your foot on the inside of your knee or leg or whatever, mm-hmm, and, right. and put your arms up or whatever? Mm-hmm. It was like well, that sort tree, of stuff. Tree okay, pose. tree pose, sure, whatever you want to call it. Trikonasana. What? No, trikonasana is triangle. All right. Uh... And I like how I said trikonasana because it was true. Oh my god, my brain is turning to mush. I do not know how you do podcasting. You just you don't think about it. You just have to keep talking. That's all that matters. <laughs> just keep talking. So the balance board told you you were super off balance, right? It told me that too, though. Right, and I well, I was though, but I and I, and I focused more on being balanced uh, with the way my foot feet uh, hit the ground and mm-hmm. and all that sort of Your stuff, foot-ums. and I felt a little better. Uh, from that but anyway so that was kind of the first like yoga like thing i ever did was that stuff and can i just tell you the yoga that they cultivated cultivated yeah sure is that the word i don't know sure that they got for the we fit was really uh what's the word the technique was i would say a lacking okay it was are you saying the we fit trainer the lady that's in smash brothers is not not ideal. She went to like yoga you know works what twice. I, you and know then... what I did like, um, which didn't have any kind of shelf life at all or or longevity is the what was that? Your fitness for the Xbox oh, way back right. when, yeah, where it had the woman. She was not a real woman. She was a not a. She was a not a real. Mm-hmm. And was that the one where they had like the weird QB silhouette of yes. the body with the connect stuff? Yes. I tried doing it that. It wasn't with connect though. Oh, it wasn't? Okay. It was just for the Xbox and you could only, it would only Your give you fitness. like three songs and three backgrounds mm-hmm. and different exercises, but you had to unlock different music. You had to unlock different scenes. Like she could be in a high rise with a helicopter Ooh, going by. Very fancy. I thought that that was pretty good. Hmm. The yoga in there was pretty good. Hmm. You can't find, you could find that game maybe. Like original Xbox, not Xbox Never. 360? It was original, I think. Huh. All right. I think you might be able to use it for the 360, though. Like a backwards thing. Oh. Hmm. Yeah. I think it's compatible. All right. But... Yeah. I don't know. But the... the So, yeah. you I've probably done yoga with you, what, like five, six times? Probably and... more than that. Yeah. Maybe it was more like that. Because there was one time... We... Anyway. Stretch. We were doing it every yeah. week. Anyway. It was nice for what it was. Yeah. You know? Like, it... it it was good. I felt a little more loose, yeah. I guess, as we were doing it. I think but... that 
if you continued, I think you would feel good because a lot of times when we're doing yoga, you say you have the attitude a lot of I can't. I can't, I can't, I can't, I can't. But well, no, that's what you say. That's in in my head. It's like I'm trying very hard to do this, and you hear that as me saying no, I can't. What you say. Because what I'm saying is I need you to help me do this right because I don't think I'm doing it right. You say that sometimes when Muslims are just say I can't. All right. <laughs> <laughs> but if you continued, I think you would find that you can. And you will, like, you know, it doesn't have to be crazy positions. Hmm. You know, could just be working Anyway, up to one th th that was my point, is that, that this stuff is relatively easy enough that you could at least get started, kind of no matter what. Oh, yes, uh, for sure, definitely. But, and I would recommend going to a studio. Like, you would recommend someone walking in knowing nothing and going to a studio? That seems, like, crazy. I would go to a beginner class. They're, dif dif they're different classes, you know? Like I said, Hatha yoga is really good for beginners. Mm -hmm. I don't know if people would have access to a yoga works, but that's where I was trained, and I really... But, like, you were trained, like, to be a teacher. Like, so that's, that's yeah, different than... Yeah, but you still have to, you know, I still had to walk into a studio. I still had to start somewhere, and... Sometimes, if you're doing it on your own at home, like I said, with the... the you probably um, pick up a bunch of bad habits. You and... pick up bad habits, or you're not doing it right. You don't have a mirror, you know? If mm -hmm. you don't have a full-length mirror and you can't see yourself, then you could be doing something that's really hurting your back. And then you don't want to go back and do it, because you've right. hurt your back. So, yeah. I think it's important to find a studio where... And a lot of places are really... Uh, beginner friendly and they'll say on the schedule like this class is good for beginners right and that's because uh, you know because that's the thing you know you walk into one of these and they're like let's do a downward dog and i'm like i don't even, what the fuck are you talking about yeah i would definitely not start with a class where it's like a like a if it's called a flow because that means that they're probably going to go through the, the right. poses faster that's why i bought that uh years ago i bought that ddp yoga set because it, it was on sale. I want you to try that. I want you to try that. <laughs> because uh, my understanding from... It is unopened. Yeah. No, I, I In just, the plastic. I was like, oh, this might be a fun thing to do. And then I was like, eh. And you talked about it. You're like, yeah, I gotta, I want to start... I want to do that wrestling yoga. I want to do the wrestling yoga. And I was like... Well, okay, it was like people were, people were kind of like swearing by it a little bit and saying like, actually, this is really helping me out. Mm -hmm. And... Uh, That's and, what I and, love. And, and the, the guy who's on it, Diamond Dallas Page, actually has gotten some, something of a reputation for turning people's lives around. Like other ex-wrestlers who have, you know, their bodies are just fucked from right. years of wrestling and also right. like horrible addiction problems and all this other stuff. Like he's like, hey, if you're really serious about this stuff and, and you can get clean for a while and then come move in with me and I will fucking get you on the path. And there's like multiple Jake, the snake, Razor Ramon, I guess, just incredible. Who's a guy who's going to mm. probably come down there pretty soon. Who's had some substance abuse problems, but like there's been a lot of lives. He's like turned around with this stuff. That's what uh, and, actually I've noticed a lot is that yoga is great for people who have suffered from substance abuse problems. Huh. Uh, any kind of mental abuse. It's a great thing for trauma. Yeah. Um, for me, better than talk therapy, because I need to move. Move therapy. Move therapy. Hmm. But, but I, the, so the thing about these DVDs yeah. that I do know, yeah, yeah, yeah. that I, is, which is why I want you to see it sometime, is that he has renamed every single pose yes. to be something from wrestling. Like what? Like... Uh, Give me an example. I, I I can't. So I haven't watched it. I've only heard. Uh, but it's like there's stuff where it's like, OK, now we're going to go up into Undertaker or, or now we're <laughs> going to go and do. OK, everyone into showstopper pose showstopper. And, and all this other shit uh, that is like lightly referential to wrestling. Uh, so you might be able to connect it with. Okay, I know what that is supposed to be because you know, when you say upward dog, downward this, and shasna vahasna, well, those are like, the I don't traditional know what, names. Of course they are, but I don't know what the fuck any of that is. That's going to take me months to even remember what those things are. It's it is literally learning another language. Mm -hmm. uh, Sanskrit. So having this shortcut of dumb wrestling shit is smart for that and that audience and that sort of stuff. Like, I get why you would do that. But also, it just seems hilarious. And I think that's great. That's part of what I love about the culture being so turned on to yoga now is they can, it can appeal to anyone. Hmm. You know, they, they can make it for anyone. Right, um, yeah. 
I guess that's the thing is the thing I like is, is the idea of just like, Hey, like there are a lot of people that mean that take yoga to mean a lot of different things and all this Mm -hmm. like spiritual, whatever, like (laughs) I'm not looking for that. Like I'm looking for like the exercise end of it. Uh, the, the stretching kind of get in better shape end of it. And, and so, so having it be like removed from the more kind of mumbo jumbo aspect of it makes me feel a little more comfortable doing it because I'm, I'm not, I'm just not really looking for that. What is it about it being maybe a little spiritual that freaks you out so much? It's not, I don't know that it's necessarily that I'm freaked out about it. What turns you off? It, it's where it seems fake. It's where I look at it and go like, this seems like bullshit. This seems like people telling you that, oh, yeah, this is so good for this to get you to come back, to get you to spend money, to get you. And then suddenly you're, you know, you're investing all your time and money into this thing. I can uh, definitely see it from that point of view. I think that if you're doing yoga for long enough, you will find that maybe you do feel a little bit of that spiritual side. You do feel like, even if it's just like you said, like, I don't feel calm afterwards. I don't feel like right. Like I I see why some people would say, call that spiritual and, 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 you know, mindfulness kind of is what it is. Right. I just kind of look at it as just like, all right, like if I find the right way to relax, I'll be able to clear my head a little bit. Mm -hmm. Uh, and, that's not some other world worldly force. That's me getting better at being me. You know? Right. We're all just skin sacks. Mm-hmm. You know? But it's like you want to... There's more. There is more. Hmm. <laughs> eh, we'll see. <laughs> you will see. <laughs> you will see. All right. I think that's going to do it for us here. <laughs> That wasn't even a burp. Now you're just fake burp. No, I was like looking at how long we've been talking. Yeah. Damn near an hour. All right. Well, that's this has been damn near an hour. We'll see you next time. <laughs> Maybe we should set up an email address or something. People could send something in one of these times. Soup to bada Konasana. What? Dot org. Soup to. What was the dot pizza? Yeah, we get a dot pizza. I think that exists. Uh, we get dot XXX, all sorts of stuff. But that's for next time. All right. Bye.